Hello, I'm Emma Louise Coffey, and you're welcome to the Dairy Edge, the Chagas Dairy Podcast. We're bringing you the latest information, insights, and opinion to improve dairy farm performance. On this week's episode, grassland researcher Mike Egan quantifies the grass cover on farms at the moment and provides tips and advice for farms that find themselves behind or ahead of target in order to help reach peak cover in late September. If we look at the pasture-based figures that come out in the Grass 10 newsletter every week, uh, this week it highlighted that currently average farm cover is 812 kilos, uh, 260 kilos a cover per cow, uh, and current growth rates are around 63 um, on farms. So if, if we look at the averages alone, we're probably a little bit behind target. We'll go into the targets in a minute, but, but more worryingly is probably the range that we see uh, within farms. So uh, looking at the pasture-based figures again, Michal Leary sent them on to me. The range that we see on average of 812, the range is 320 to 1186 of a, of a farm cover of a range, which is probably a little bit more concerning when we look at farms that are down at 320 kilos or farms that are up near 1200 kilos currently in, in the middle of August. Let's look at that range, Mike, and, and, and look at the extremes of it. If you're in the situation where your average farm cover is behind target today, what do you do? Yeah, look at if, if we look at and, and pasture base have targets up on the website too. Uh, we know at the moment we're now somewhere around the the twenty fifth of of August, so the middle to the end of August. We know that we should be sitting some, depending on stocking rate between seven hundred and fifty to nine hundred ninety kilos of an average farm cover uh, coming up to the first of September. Um, and again, that's ranging on stocking rate. So if we look at the average. We know, based on that stocking rate of 3.2, uh, we're about 120 kilos behind target to date where we need to be. Um, so if, if we are in a situation that we're behind target, the first thing we need to do is, is put on the brakes now to allow us to get up to target and reach that target by the first week of September. And if your target is 750 by the 1st of September or 990 by the 1st of September, we need to put on the brakes now. Uh, put in supplementation if required if there's stock on the farm that can move off heifers uh, avoid cutting any silage at the moment uh, and bring back in ground um, that wasn't that that currently isn't in the rotation or if there was planned receding probably put off that receding till next year if you're a long way behind target so i think if, if we don't do that now it's going to be very very difficult when we get into september and particularly the second half of september to try and get that back up on target so the sooner we can do that now the bigger benefit we're going to get in the next couple of months from that and then looking at the other end of the spectrum you know you mentioned up as far as 1186 of a farm cover on some farms is there such thing as too much grass right now yeah look at there probably is and again they're just ranges it could be one or two farms that are on that but there's probably individual farms that are probably up on 150 to 200 kilos above target at the moment and the one thing that i would say to those is if they're above target now growth rates currently are doing about 63 to 65 kilos of dry matter average demand on those pasture-based farms is currently 50 so that cover is going to continue to build uh, probably not fast enough on farms that are way below target but probably too fast on those farms that are probably above target now so if you are in a situation that you're 200 or 250 kilos above target uh, which probably is the case in some farms we probably need to bring in extra stock the, the complete opposite of what i've just said for the low farms if there's heifers that can come back onto the platform bring them back onto the platform if you're currently feeding supplementation the average supplementation on pasture base at the moment is three kilos can you reduce that back if you're above target or as a last resort cutting out some surplus paddocks um but i would say that the, the deadline for taking out those surplus paddocks is in the next five to ten five to six days so definitely before the first september we won't have any surplus paddocks come out and i would only do that in the case that you are 200 to 200 150 kilos above by reducing supplementation or bringing back in additional stock may be sufficient um, to get that back down or back down on target and looking then not to get bogged down in figures and we've covered a lot but you know when you look at target farm cover right now you know we're still building covers and and looking to get to peak sometime in september can you give us uh, the the date of when you want to be hitting peak and what sort of a cover you want to see at that time? Yeah, so again, it's completely driven. The, the date is, is something similar in terms of when we hit peak. We want to be hitting peak the last couple of days of September to the 1st of October. So if we just pick the 1st of, the 1st of October as a, as a key point date and we want to hit peak cover. 
So that is currently, uh, we're now on the 25th, so we're now 35 to 40 days away from the 1st of October ballpark. So that's the date that we're aiming towards. Again, based on Stockholm, it's going to be it's going to be slightly different. Our peak cover, if we are at a Stockholm rate of two point five, is somewhere around a thousand kilos uh, of average farm cover, or four hundred kilos per cow. Um, if we look at the um, farms that are stocked at three and three point five, again, we're talking somewhere around eleven hundred to twelve hundred kilos of a peak farm cover. Um, by the again by the first of October, so that's again somewhere around four hundred to four hundred and fifty kilos of cover per cow, and what we need to do now in terms of achieving that is just what we talked about in terms of reducing or increasing supplementation. What you do, and the problem is if we don't do the get it back on target now, whether it be too high or too low, it's going to be very very difficult to achieve that first of October target, and then we're in a situation that we don't have enough grass on farm coming into that final rotation when we start that final rotation on the last in the first week of October uh, and are actually going to potentially two things reduce our farm cover too low if we keep going as normal or have to house the cows very very early to maintain our farm cover and put in a lot of additional supplementation so by doing this now in the next two to three weeks and getting back on target will actually have huge benefits in terms of reducing supplementation cost for the remainder of the year. Uh, and you mentioned not hitting target now. It's a little bit of a vicious circle. You mentioned, you know, the knock on effects it can have in and around the 1st of October and into the last rotation. Let's look then to the last rotation. So, you know, it tends to happen now in around the 1st of October on farms. There are concerns and I guess reasons why farmers differ from the target set out from like what we would see in, in say, the grass 10 targets. And to address some of those issues, some farmers would worry about carrying heavy covers through the winter. And this idea of the cover will disappear from, say, the 1st of December up un until the 1st of February. Can you comment on that, Mike? And is that something that you would have observed in, in research that you'd have carried out? Yes, look, we have a lot of research done now. We have four years combined in total on autumn closing date studies, uh, looking at, I suppose, the industry target, which is probably that first week of October, 7th to 10th of October, and have the cows housed on the 24th of November. And then we've gone two weeks earlier, so we set housing cow or closing cover on the 25th of September, and we have the cows housed by the 10th of November. And likewise, then, what you've just said there are people dropping their cover low, not having those heavy covers on, and pushing out that st end date of the first rota last rotation and later housing dates as well, so we don't have that big cover of grass on it. And when we have done that, I suppose there's two things we need to look at. The first thing is on the autumn part of that, what happens when we house the cows earlier to try and build up that farm cover, uh, and then what happens over the winter and into the spring period. So when we started looking at those kind of closing covers and what we were aiming in in terms of a closing cover on those three different systems was um, current standard of 650 to 700, then about 800 to 850 on the high of a closing farm cover on the 1st of December, and then dropping that down to 450, 500 then on the low um, farm cover, which is what you were talking about. And when we did that, we actually didn't see any impact on late lactation milk production. So regardless if the cows were housed uh, earlier or later, we didn't see any significant difference in daily milk yield or milk solids production. When the cows were fully housed and on full-time silage, we did see a slight reduction in protein percent of 0.1. Uh, again, marginal, and it was just when cows were housed fully. So the late lactation, there isn't a huge impact on actual animal performance. But by going that later and dropping our farm cover lower, uh, it has significant impacts on our overwinter growth rates and the amount of grass that we have available on farm as well coming into the following spring. And just in that point that you raised there too, uh, and we hear it, I hear it all the time when we're talking to discussion groups too, that this paddock is too too heavy to carry over. I'm going to use it or lose it is probably the term I hear an awful lot. Uh, and okay, so if we look at it, and there probably is a certain sense that if there's a very heavy cover of grass there coming into the winter period, uh, is that too heavy to carry over? Are we going to get significant herbage loss and tiller death and till tiller mortality? And the two students that are working on this project was Ashen Claffey on the animal production side and then Caitlin Looney on the, the, the grass and agronomy stuff. And Caitlin did a huge amount of work on this senescence over the winter period. And typically what we see is tissue turnover, is what we would call it. So we are going to lose leaves once we go beyond that kind of three to four leaf stage. We are going to lose t live leaves on it. 
But what's replacing those is new leaves coming out. So although we won't see a huge or a significant reduction in, in herbage yield, you don't actually lose it. You're getting this tissue turnover. So you're getting a lot of dead material at the base of the sward, but there's new green leaves coming out at the at the top of the sward. So you, you may lose between 5 and 10% is the, the maximum that we have seen that we have actually uh, lost because the new leaves are coming out are slightly smaller than the, the leaves that are senescing or dying. Uh, but significant, it, there's no significant difference in terms of herbage loss by carrying these heavy covers over. And we carried extremely heavy covers over. But what we would say is, if you're closing at a farm cover of 700 to 750, your highest paddock is going to be somewhere around 14 to 1500 kilos. And when we see these 14 to 1500 kilos at closing and over the winter, we don't see any significant herbage loss or more importantly, tiller mortality or tiller death, as long as we can get them grazed correctly in the spring period. So just to pick up on a point there, and, and it's um it's a really good rule of thumb that people can use. You mentioned if your cover, if you have a, an average farm cover of 650 to 700, the maximum cover you're looking at having on farm is around that 1400 kilos. So it's your farm cover multiplied by two. And to talk a little bit further about that tissue turnover and the senescence of those leaves when they reach the th- th- uh, the three and four leaf stage. Talk to us about quality. Again, another concern, yeah. heavier covers, um, some dead material. Is that leading to a lower quality sward in the springtime? Yes. So if you have uh, swards that have more dead material in the base of the sward, dead brown senesce material is of poor feed quality than green live leaf material. And, and that's... 100% and fully accepted but what you need to look at is the full sward profile so if you have a a, a cover and, and when we looked at these different closing dates so the early the normal and the late and the the, the, the dates i said earlier uh, when we looked at this the quality of these um swords in spring in the first rotation we did see a, a reduction in omd quality of these swords coming from 84 uh, percent sorry 82 percent uh, on the early, so the very high covers, we, ha- we had an 82% OMD, whereas on the lower farm cover, we had an 85%. So a 3% difference in OMD quality. So we did have a reduction in sward quality, but again, we were reducing it by, f- by 3 to 4%, uh, down from 85 to 82%, uh, but that is still much greater sward or feed quality than, than the very good quality silage. So you will see a slight reduction in feed quality, but nothing near the level that you would expect or compare to grass silage. And if we think about, um, you know, UFL value based on, you know, when we order um, uh, a concentrate from the the, the co-op or the merchant, um, you know, we talk about trying to get to that one UFL and, you know, typically it's, it's a little lower than that. How does that OMD translate into UFLs? Oh, yeah. So if we look at those OMDs of 82% or 85%, there's marginal difference. I would say 3%, although significant because we had a lot of paddocks in it, it's marginal and both of those paddocks would be in excess of one UFL. So there is no issue on terms of the actual reduction in feed quality in it, although there is a reduction in, in overall quality. The feed going into the animal is still of huge importance. But just on that, so if we look at that kind of feed quality of 82 versus 85%, what we have within that is an opening farm cover of a thousand versus an opening farm cover of 700 um in in those two systems uh, and when we look at that if we, if we look at the amount of green leaf material that we have in that thousand paddock versus the uh 700 or sorry thousand farm cover versus the 700 farm cover we have a huge more a huge amount more of green leaf material on green herbage mass available in the high opening farm cover versus the low opening farm cover. So although the the feed quality percent is one figure to look at, might be slightly lower, uh, we have a huge amount more of that green feed material available to those cows on the high farm cover versus the low farm cover, bearing you can get out to utilize it in the spring. And uh, uh, again, to move on another little bit, Mike, when we think about then um, getting out to that grass in the spring, and, you know, you talk about having a farm cover of a thousand and sometimes a good overwinter growth. It can be in excess of that. And some farmers will say, what if the weather comes poor in February and we don't get out? Is there do you see an issue with carrying those covers an extra two weeks into mid uh, February or the situation where you're out in early February and you hit a bad spell for a week or two? 
Yeah, so I think that the first thing to bear in mind is, uh, so I said a thousand of farm cover versus 700 of farm cover there. So we've done this over four years. And by doing the exact same thing in the autumn pl- closing management strategy, we got vastly different answers uh, the following spring. So j- just to bring it back to the autumn point again, I think going solely on a date driven uh, autumn closing strategy, we probably ne- not move away from, we still need to look at our autumn budget and our autumn closing um, planner, our autumn planner. But we need to look at it in conjunction with our feed demand and our average farm cover on spring. So not every farm needs an opening farm cover of a thousand and not every farm would be able to utilize that. And likewise, having an opening farm cover of a 700 on extremely high stock farms is probably not a good thing either. So I think we need to balance where we need to be in the spring. And most farmers will know in the next couple of weeks what their scan results are going to be like when their start calving data is is, uh, and what their six week calving is look at and to get that spring demand and try and match that as best as possible with your closing strategy to get the grass on farm that you need the following spring. Because if you're stocked at 2.4 or 2.5 cows, your planned start calving date is the 14th or 15th of February. There's no need for you to have an opening farm cover of a thousand on the 1st of February. Likewise, if you're stocked at three or 3.5 and your planned start calving date is the 25th of January, you probably need to be closer to that a thousand farm cover than someone else. So matching it to individual farms is probably very very important and the second point then is to being able to utilize that on farm and look the the reason i brought up is the vastly different responses that we got in each of the years when we had a the the early farm cover that we call it or the early closing treatment to try and get a thousand of a farm opening farm cover in the three different years uh in year 2017 and 2018, we had an opening farm cover of 1,000 or 1,060, which is very, very similar. But in 2019, because of the very high growth rates over winter in 2018 uh, and into spring of 19, we opened at an opening farm cover of 1,400 kilos. In that system scenario, I would say we need to go back to your autumn closing strategy. And rather than just housing the cows on the 9th of November, as we did, because we had a high farm cover at that stage, we could have probably continued to graze uh, slightly later on on that system in that year uh, and maintain our farm cover of 800 on the 1st of December rather than closing at 1,000. So I think rather than doing the same thing every year, we need to adjust where we are uh, based on the current growth rates that we have or the, um, the system that we're implementing. Or likewise, because of the poor overwinter growth rates in 2017 into spring of 18 we probably could have closed slightly earlier on some of the later closed treatments to try and maintain that farm cover rather than just going on a solely day basis Um, and yes you're going to have scenarios in the spring that it's extremely wet if you're on a heavy farm i know you had danny birmingham on your on your podcast in the last couple of weeks if you're on a heavy farm uh, and you're not going to be able to get out to utilize grass on the first of february uh four out of five years the chances of you being able to utilize an opening farm cover of a thousand on the four, on the first of February is very difficult. Um, so you need to tailor it that for your farm if it is a slightly heavier farm, and everyone even knows their own farm um, better than than I can talk here today. So again, tailoring it for that, and you're going to have years that on a dry farm it's an extremely bad spring like we had in 2018, and we're going to have to house the cows. But the benefit of having that farm cover on that opening farm cover on farm the three or the four out of the five years is much more beneficial than than not having it and just on those heavy covers that we're carrying over back to some of caitlin's work we know that if we have a on an opening farm cover of 900 or a thousand uh, we're going to have paddocks that are up on 17 1800 kilos of, an, of a pre-grazing herbage mass if we don't graze those paddocks as early as possible in the first rotation we are going to get significant sward quality deterioration and also tiller mortality and tiller loss so what i would say is regardless of your farm cover you should aim so the first 20 percent of the paddock that you close in autumn you should try and have grazed by the end of the first week of march um, in order to allow those to um, recover some of the tillers that they may have lost over the winter period and also maintain sward quality and the regrowths on those paddocks and, you know, that that first of March target is is in ways it's relatively simple to achieve that when things know, are going well. Yeah, you have cows calved three and four weeks and yes. the appetite is up. Yes. Just like to, to, I suppose, go back. What I'm hearing from you, Mike, is while there are targets here set out and, and we see them on the Grass 10 newsletter, um, you know, and across Chagas publications, people really need to take that advice and then put it into practice 
depending on their stocking rate, their calving date. Looking then, Mike, and, and to go back to the point you make um, in relation to when we look at the last rotation, it's not necessarily date driven. And if we cast our mind back to, you know, 10 years ago, we had the 60-40 planner and it was we grazed 60 percent from the 10th of October until the end of November and or said the start of November. And then from the 1st of November, you know, we grazed the subsequent 40 percent. But every paddock was grazed from the start of October until we closed. And that has somewhat changed. And you mentioned the 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 cover, the average farm cover as, as a slightly different point. So just, I guess, for you, um, how do you see the autumn, that final rotation um, playing out? I know you, you, you mentioned the 24th of November as the standard as when we finish. Yeah, that is that seems to be happening earlier and earlier on farms. As, yeah. a, as a consequence, probably of not achieving peak, but also acknowledging I'm at the cover where I need to close. Yes. So I think the, the autumn planner is excellent. And if you're going solely on the autumn planner, things will work out on average. Um, I, I think the autumn planner, we need to look at the autumn planner the same way we now look at the spring rotation planner. Um, w- we do it on our computer coming up now to the end of the final rotation. So most people should have their autumn budget done anyway at the moment to see where they are uh, on the pasture base uh, site and adjust accordingly and autumn or, and also our autumn planner. And you can put in the interim date there as well. So you've mentioned 60, 40. You, you can change those dates slightly, but I still think that works quite well. And although we can put in on our autumn planner that we start closing on the 5th of October and we want to have 60% graze by the 1st of November and we can continue to do that, I think it's extremely important during that autumn period and the same way in the spring to continue to do our farm cover, our farm walks. Um, the problem is when we just look at the, the autumn planner in isolation without doing any farm walks during that period, you can run into a period of a deficit or too high of a farm cover uh, either or depending on the year so I still think we can look at that autumn planner and the, the 60% or 70% some people are going to know by the 1st of November and reassess where we are at that date uh, and if we're in a situation on the 1st of November we know we want a closing farm cover and I think we need to look at a standard date for a closing farm cover of the 1st of December not on housing date they're two different uh, two different questions or two different aspects but if we look at we want 800 or 900 on the 1st of December I'm currently after grazing 60% of my, my farm like the autumn planner has told me now on the 1st of November my current farm cover is 400 um, I'm not going to double my farm cover and that's if I continue to graze the remaining 40%. I'm not going to be able to double my farm cover from the 1st of November to the 1st of December to get to 800. So in that instance, although you have grazed 60% of your farm, you just change the start date. And although you had a paddock planned to graze in the next couple of weeks, that is now closed to bring back up your farm cover in line where you need it to be. Or likewise, if you're on the 1st of November and you realize that you have a farm cover of 1,000 um, and you only have 40% left to graze and when you actually realistically do it, your closing farm cover is going to be somewhere around 900 or 1,000, too high of where you want it to be, then you can continue to go back in and graze a paddock again that you had theoretically closed. And it's very easy to mess around with that on your pasture base too and say, if I put in this paddock that is now grazed and graze it again, what will it do to my farm cover? Or likewise, this paddock isn't grazed, but if I take it out of the grazing rotation and say it now is closed, what will it do to my farm cover on the 1st of December and predict it forward? So I think you need to look at the two things in combination together, your autumn planner and your farm cover and your feed budget management. And finally, then, Mike, you make the point that, you know, across your four years of research, no difference in milk yield, a slight drop in protein percentage for cows when they were housed full time on silage compared with cows that were out at grass. We hear these figures of an extra day at grass in the spring is worth two euro seventy per cow. um, And then that extra day benefit in the autumn is maybe one euro seventy, one euro eighty. So economically there is a benefit to get out in the spring and I guess that is um, a conclusion that um, that we would see but from your perspective what is the benefit of having that grass in the spring 
across your different treatment groups compared yes. with grazing on in the autumn? So, look, when we had many groups in here, we had cows housed here on the 9th of November and cows out till the first week of December as well. So obviously there's a huge difference in silage going in in those periods. Uh, but because we have grazed so late and dropped our farm cover so low, we have a lower farm cover in the spring. We now have to put that silage in in the spring period. So cumulatively across the entire year, we didn't actually see any difference in silage going in between the spring and the autumn across any of our treatments. It was just going in at a different time period. But in terms of our milk production that we got in the spring period from having that higher opening farm cover, so for every extra kilo of grass that we had on our farm, we got an extra 0.38 of a liter of grass of, of milk per cow, sorry, um, or 0.38 of a kilo of milk per cow for one kilo of extra grass allocated to those cows. So we got a hugely significant impact on spring milk production and on, on average from the 1st of October, 1st of February turnout date until the 1st of May, we produced an additional 22 kilos of milk solids per cow by having a higher opening farm cover versus a lower opening farm cover. Now, again, this was on the same system, a stocking rate of three cows per hectare and 85, 90% six week calving rate. Everything was the same here. It was just the farm cover that we had changed. I'm not saying everyone needs to have a thousand or seven hundred of farm cover. It is farm specific. But by having that grass on your farm, whatever the demand is on your farm, by having that grass on, on farm in spring is much more beneficial than having it in the autumn period in terms of animal performance and feed budget management. That's great. Thank you, Mike. Thanks very much. That's it for this week's episode of the Dairy Edge podcast. And my thanks to Mike Egan for joining me on this week's show. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast. You can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. And for more information, go to the Chagas website at chagas.ie. I'm Emma-Louise Coffey and join me next time for your Dairy Edge.